Billiken fans, welcome back. It's Zach Miller and Peter Hale. It's the Midtown Madness podcast. Before we get going, thank you so much for listening. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, make sure you're commenting too, guys, please. If if anything we talk about on the show, uh, timestamp it, comment, uh, anything, anything at all. Seriously, uh, we love to converse i like to hear myself talk really is is what it boils down to uh it's season four pete of the midtown madness podcast and uh it's of course brought to you by two men in a garden Uh, i spend too much time online well i'm not chronically online but i watch a ton of internet content and some of the ridiculous sponsorships out there uh just drive me insane Uh, No useless subscription service that sends you a new piece of bathroom decoration each week. Not here. Uh, We're only about uh, websites that send you delicious uh, local salsa. And that's two men in a garden. It tastes amazing. They've got all the flavors to suit your individual salsa preferences. You can pick up their many products at any local grocery store or online at two men in a garden dot com. And if you're particular about your salsa preferences, that's where you want to go first. Follow them on social media at Two Men Salsa on Instagram and Twitter. Pete, 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 sweet, sweet Pete. I'm I'm in pain. I I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say I need to be put on the injured list with a broken heart. I'm with you, Zach. <laughs> I, I I'm absolutely with you. Uh, heartbreaking was really really the theme right of this weekend we we, you and i i think there's there's no surprise to anyone within the sound of our voices right now that we have absolutely fallen in love with this soccer team this slew women's soccer team is just incredible an incredible group and and what a season and we'll we'll have a lot to say about them today yeah i uh i i've really enjoyed the roller coaster ride Uh, and really it, it hasn't been much of a roller coaster uh contrary to uh, a lot of the other sports cough men's basketball cough um women's soccer has been uh so impressively steady over the last six years and i i i have no other belief other than that this will continue going into next season however the billikens did fall today in the Sweet 16 to Penn State. But before we get to that, uh, they took down uh, three seed Georgetown, Pete, and made history. Yeah, they really did, Zach. And and this Georgetown team was really good. Like, I, I think people should just just to set the table here. Number one, Georgetown beat. Uh, who, who did they beat on the other side to get in? Old Dominion in overtime to get into this game against SLU. Number two, they won the Big East, which was very good at the top. Um, Xavier was a team that SLU lost to earlier in the year, and that's who Georgetown beat in the final to uh, you know to get, end up with a three seed in the tournament. Georgetown was the number eight seed in the RPI at the end of the regular season. This was a very, very good team that SLU took down here. Um, and you're right, and they, they, they made history in the process by, uh, by getting to their first Sweet 16 with this win, Zach. Yeah, 2-1 win um, at Penn State on Friday the 17th. Um, and it really did feel like the Billikens were just were, were going to win this one. Like, uh, in that first half, like, we didn't score, but it they just felt it, it was one of those where you, you know when you watched Slew in the past and they looked a little nervous, a little edgy, uh, not edgy, but a little, you know, on edge. Uh, and, and, you know, they were maybe just missing uh, their timing here and there, or the ball would, you know, just seemingly bounce right back to the other team. Not in this one. Uh, the Billikens were really on their game. Uh, and and fortunately for the Billikens, they took the lead in the 46th minute, Pete. They did. And who else, Zach? Hannah Larson, who... <laughs> well, the... who else? Emily Gaby. Well, I, I guess I should say that. who else every other player. Yeah, there's uh, a few I could say that from. And both yes. of them, of course, were involved here. Uh, Larson had the header off an Emily Gaby cross and uh, and gave the Georgetown keeper absolutely no chance on this play. These two up top have been just incredible um, over the course of this of, of this tournament, the uh, the stretch of the season in the A-10 
a 10 tournament they've just been doing it all and uh and yeah what a cross what a header lethal stuff and and the timing of it was perfect too zach you go into half tied zero zero you come out and this happens about 40 seconds into the half if i remember correctly yeah it was it was really quick and uh i just i i gave a i i tried to control my uh celebration at work just a nice little fist pump and and on to the next uh on to the kickoff uh 61st minute uh hannah sawyer on a feed from Emily Gaby, um, she gives the Bills a 2-0 lead here. Yeah, she did that Hannah Sawyer thing where she gets the ball, and I think the way I put it in, in on Twitter, Zach, was all turbo button all the time. Yes, L <laughs> R1 at all times. Yeah, she like right as soon trigger, as she gets the ball. Cons- we call, uh, call her right trigger. That's, that's exactly what it is. It's like, okay, she's faster than that defender makes a big turn around her and then puts in a pretty nice ball that wasn't a sure thing off her foot. You know, it looked like the keeper had pretty good position on it. And actually the keeper got a piece of it before it went in um, to the near side of the net, but it was, she hit it hard enough, which she always does. She crushes the ball, um, hit it hard enough that it got by, by her and in. Um, I really like the replay Zach, because you could see Larson on the opposite side and she's well behind Sawyer. So I don't think she was calling for the ball, but she kind of put her arm up in a way that normally you would think she's saying, like, over here, I'm open. But I think she was just celebrating before Sawyer even took the shot. So she puts one arm up. So there's no way Sawyer can see her. And then she puts the other one up as soon as it crosses the line. And it was just like... Uh, it was like she, she was uh, she was uh, calling a three-pointer. She was like a ref signaling a three pointer. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. One, one arm in the air. And then, uh, yeah, she lets it rip. And there's the second one. Do you remember when, uh, Brad Soderbergh did the video, uh, the pregame video on like how to cheer and it was kind of cringy, but like also we kind of needed it. Why don't I remember? I should Uh, remember that. That's my area. Yeah. Hey, Hey, Billiken fans, make sure, you know, if a three goes up right arm in the air and then when it goes in, I swear oh, to God, wow. I, I, right. I, yeah, we got to dig that up. I can't find, I, I, you were I can't probably working hard when that, when that, uh, came out. Yeah. I was, oh yeah. Definitely focused in those days. Um, uh, you know what? Like, we'll, uh, we'll get, we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about the 89th minute goal. Georgetown gets one back. And, uh, this was, uh, this was how Georgetown and, and later Penn state were dangerous in both of these matches. Yeah, a, a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice run here from Julia Lees to uh, to find the back of the net in the 89th minute, and it was it was pretty nerve wracking because then they had a corner kick with about 25 seconds left, uh, but it was it was crowded in the box and Georgetown a little aggressively wound up fouling uh, Percelli, uh with just about everyone up, and and that was it. That was enough time. Uh, by the time that happened, the game was basically over. So uh luckily escaped with one there but but you're you're right in that this really did feel like slew was mostly in command um just until that last couple minutes when georgetown all of a sudden um had a couple chances and put one in man i i just could not stand the announcers all weekend no they weren't great they were just not not good um the billigans had the advantage in shots the first half uh georgetown had some opportunities but it was it was pretty pretty evenly matched. Uh, however, uh, the Billikens were the more threatening team all game, obviously, mm-hmm. as they scored. But um, I, I don't think uh, Georgetown had a shot in the first half. Did I see that wrong? Uh, you're going to make me go back and look. I yep. uh, sorry about it. I can't. I can't remember. My my memory is scrubbed every day with with this many games in every sport. Um, but it looks like they uh, they had two shots, but I don't think they had either on goal in the first half. Yeah, no, um, I, I. Yeah, I I remember them having a couple opportunities. They they had a couple opportunities as well that I don't think would have counted as shots. Um, but uh, but yeah, they didn't have any. I don't think they had any shots on goal in the first half. Was it? Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, this team was just awesome in this one, man. I don't know what else to, to say about them. Yeah. I mean, God, 
it's you know look larson's goal like i said before the timing of it was awesome um it, it also like you started to see georgetown kind of get frustrated that's when gaby really started getting to their back line just I, I mean she frustrating was frustrating like, them yeah i i mean she again she made that team look like children yeah and, physically and- just and you see her do that a lot in the A10, but then sometimes you you face these like power conference teams and you don't see it as much. And we'll get to that with Penn State because Penn State had some some real size on their back line. Yeah, and uh, you know they were Gaby couldn't quite push them around like she had with others. Um, but Georgetown was one. It took a little time, but eventually she kind of found her 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 way uh, with them eventually. And then this is another one where Emily Percelli was just in absolute control from start to finish. Um, always in the right place, always cutting off angles. I think you called her the geometry major. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dude, that last, uh, what was that uh, shot from that? It was it was uh, a shot that came in from like the elbow of the 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 area, and uh-huh. she was probably I don't know fifteen feet off. Like she was uh, over ten feet off her line, and mm-hmm. just cut down that angle, and 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 there was no room for them to put that in. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, like, like I, I, there just, there, there wasn't much in this game where you actually felt like they were going to score until they finally did. Right. I mean, like she just, she really had them, um, you know, flummoxed. Uh, she, she just was always where she needed to be. It was her 67th win too, which is a school record that she continues to extend. And then her back line was great too. You know, uh, Lindsay Heckel, uh, unfortunately took a bomb off the face late in this game. I felt so bad for it. It was just over two minutes to play and uh good thing. She's okay. But, um, it was, a, it was a little bit before they, they scored, I believe. And she just took one point blank to the face, but that's not to say like the, the, the back line was just, they were, they were great in this what, one, just like they were against Indiana. What'd you think of the, the weather? I was nervous because we've had rain games, uh, in the past like like cold rainy games uh and then you got george well. the, the george mason debacle right the tsunami game yeah um and and so so that that game always comes to mind right because it shouldn't have been played you didn't get the result you wanted it was frustrating and i was like oh god i hope it's not a weird weather game a, right like a we washington saw the, the the that's right the men's team in the elite eight with a horrible field that they should not have played on in in, in wet conditions um, last year, the game was super cold against Memphis in the first round. And I was like, I, it, it always feels like when they get bounced, the weather's bad, right? Like, like I guess men or women lately. Luckily, that was not the case here. I was a little worried about it. But it seemed like the rain in the second half kind of let up a little. Like, it was raining, but it, it wasn't, like, pouring. It wasn't, like, a torrential downpour. It was uh, It was crazy for the, uh, the Penn State uh, Santa Clara game. It was was that played that was after. played immediately after? Yeah, okay. it was crazy. Um, yeah, I just it it was nuts. Um, I yeah, I was nervous. I mean, you, you look at the the ball skipping. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's, we're very we're we're athletic, but we're also very you know technical. You worry about Percelli, uh, yep. slipping on a, on a goal kick. You almost want to bring your uh, defender back and take the kicks, um, but yeah, I, I mean, it it made for a uh, a picture perfect evening, um, and and of course a little uh, post game celebratory slide. Yeah, there. Yeah, that was so, great. Yeah, I, I mean, everything about that game was just fun, and and it, it it's just a bright spot uh, on our Friday uh, afternoons. For sure. And then like, I mean, talking about that post game slide, man, I mean, the, the, the videos of the celebration and aftermath of this one, you could just see the emotion on everybody's faces and, and it, oh, as, yeah. as fun loving and, and spirit as, as this team is, there's also that like huge relief. There's just the pure like joy and excitement of getting to a stage they've never been to before. I mean, there's just a lot layers on layers on layers of emotions um, after this win. And you could see it all in, great videos by the way like they they did a really good good job on the the social media on this one um the shutout streak is over pete yeah. uh they almost she almost got to 1100 minutes i know yeah 
they just needed to make it another minute and a half. And then the, you know, it, this, the shutout streak would have gone to 12 games. It ended at 11 and then, yeah, they would have made 1100 minutes as well, but they, they were at 1099.09. Um, that's how many consecutive minutes of shutout soccer they, they played pretty impressive. The winning streak got up to 12 unbeaten streak was 18. Um, just, man what a what a season you you talk about the you know nearly 1200 minutes of shutout soccer and and that's one of those things where that goal that lee's goal goes in and you're like oh no do they will that how will they respond and you know it was a little hairy at the end but i mean that's just a veteran team uh holding the line and 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 finishing the game off right yeah, it, it's it, it really was. Um, shots in this one were eleven to nine. Slew's favor. Shots on goal eight to three. Corners. Georgetown had six, and Slew only had two. Fouls. Slew eight. Georgetown five. Really low number for both teams there. Um, so they, they, you know, they let them play in this one. I think a lot of that had to do with rain, though. They're probably being cautious with a lot of their challenges and their their tackling. Um, yeah, it was. <sighs> Man, I just want to go. I just want to talk about every minute in this game. I don't want to get into the next game as as much fun as the next game was. Mm-hmm. I just want to like dwell in the beauty that was the Georgetown game. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what else to say about it except for it. It was great, and I I really I was thrilled to like you know like I mentioned those videos before to actually get a glimpse of like just like like Coach Shields and like just the yeah. the what you could see on her face after that win right i mean like that's 10 years yeah it is it's, it is that's that memphis game that's mm-hmm. that you know uh, I, I, I mean that's the you know when she talked about struggling to find an identity for her team in her first few years yeah that's that that's yeah. that and on her face the amazing thing about this program zach is we we God the tedious argument on the men's basketball side about like the nature of rebuilds and and everything. This program over her tenure has got has made mark like market improvement every single year. And you can say like, well, they were bounced early last year in the tournament. That 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 still that team what they did was a step up from the year before, right? And like this team was a step up now to a, a level of the tournament they've never been to before. And and very close to going to another one. I mean, like just every single year, they build, they build, they build. There is no rebound. There's no rebuild. They've never had to 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 completely like reset and start over. Next year, they're returning a ton of firepower. They're they're returning a ton of like really good players. And yes, they lose some core players, but like literally their core. Like yeah, literally, you, if you look at the field, yes, it, it's the core. I know. And that's, that's a big deal. Yeah. But like, they'll be, we, we know they'll be okay. Like we, yeah. we just do because like the year before you looked at the players that they lost and, and people like Bree Halverson and you're just like, Oh man, I don't know. I mean, like these are the, the heart and soul of the team. And then they come out this year and they're even better. And like, no doubt, I'm not saying like next year guarantee they're going to go another round in the tournament or anything like that. I'm just saying like this, the, the whole program, together is moving forward every year and it's just it's been the most rewarding thing you know uh, speaking for myself and i'm sure you as well like to watch them every year and get more and more into them every year and like to to actually see like this is the way it's supposed to work right like this is this is what you do with the program um it's never it's never a rebuild they're just always moving forward and and it's just wow is it impressive to watch and by the way uh, okay, well, we can get into this after the Penn State game, <laughs> but yeah, I was yeah, just we'll say, get into the we'll yeah, get yeah. into the roster makeup because, like, I, I really am. I mean, it's exciting. I, I mean, as much as you I, again, we'll get into it, but like, yeah, I, I, it's just crazy. It, it's mm-hmm. crazy. They're gonna have to uh, really build that back line um, back up, though. Um, that is the one thing. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, four three overtime loss, extra time loss. Can you call it extra time if it's not thirty minutes? Is that it's only twenty minutes? You don't get to call it extra time. It's just overtime. It's think, Americanized. Yeah. yeah, I think you call it overtime. Uh versus two seed Penn State. 
the host team in the Sweet 16 on Sunday, the 19th. Uh, Penn State uh, beat seven seed Santa Clara 2 0 in the other second round matchup. Um, in an absolute downpour, uh, Penn State just they got up 2 0 early and, and held on. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, that looked to be the, the strategy here today. Yeah, it really did, Zach, because in the 22nd minute, you've got Caitlin McBean. She's a man, a heck of a player. She's I just fast. keep calling She's her really... Beanie McChimp. Which, if nobody, which is a great, which is a very obscure, uh, actually, I don't know if it's an obscure recess reference, uh, the, the cartoon recess. Never seen it. Oh, dude. All right. Back to soccer. I think I'm uh, just enough older, older than you enough to uh, get on Disney plus. No, <laughs> oh, thanks. my kids are on that enough, but she's a, she's a really impressive player, by the way. She was a problem all day. Yeah. 22nd minute. She gets across right in the middle of the box. And then, unfortunately, she's got enough time, you know, before the two defenders could close in. Uh, she kind of paused, looked up, settled it, lined up her shot, and put it in the far right uh, corner, bottom right corner of the net. Uh, Slew just couldn't collapse quick enough. And then a minute later, she gets a ball deep in the left corner, made a nice move to beat Heckel, and then placed it perfectly upper far, far corner. You know, Percelli's charging, but she's down a little bit. She put it over her head. Really nice ball. And just like that, Zach middle of the first half and we're down two nil. I, I really thought on that Percelli, um, that, that goal, I thought Percelli should have, should have just sold out. I thought she was fine all game. Uh, I mean, well, first of all, the, anytime you have four goals going, it's a tough, it's not a fun day. I won't I, call I, it a tough game, but like, it's not yeah. a fun game. Uh, but I thought she, a got a li- she hesitated maybe a little bit. And then, should have just sold out at that point because they think, think you're it's going in regardless. Yeah, I think that was a bigger factor on on one of the later goals. But or not, wait, oh, is that that one I'm thinking th- of? This this was the second one where she she did have a pretty good angle on it and McBean placed the ball perfectly. Like she she really she went up top on her. Yeah, okay. I was thinking of the uh, one where they cut to the outside and yeah, no, that was the them. last one. Yeah, this okay, was yeah. this was more. It wasn't quite a chip, but um, she put it she put it above her head a little bit. Um, nice placement from kind of a tough angle. And yeah, I was pretty nervous here because, uh, you know, middle of the first half, you're down to nothing. And it's just kind of like, I, I don't know if we're going to come back from this one. Yeah. I, I, got I, I, uh, I was, I wasn't that bad. Like I wasn't freaking out. I was just kind of like, I kind of, I kind of got to the point where I turned off the sound. Cause like, my thing was, oh God, they just scored within a minute and, and I can't listen to this guy yell goal. Yeah. Uh, one more time. Right. Like, uh, first of all, announcers, you do not have to do goal. You don't, you don't have to do that. That's not, that's not a prerequisite to announce right. soccer. Um, these guys were just freaking horrible. Yeah. Anyway, um, 35, First minute, Pete, this was all I loved this goal. Yeah, this was cool. Katie Hauk put a dangerous cross into the box and Penn State's keeper, who was, by the way, the Big Ten goalkeeper of the year. She kind of sat back and waited too long. Hannah Corn. Yeah. And uh, Hannah Larson did not let her uh, wait that long. Didn't get didn't allow the ball to reach her, made an incredible hustle play to get in front of her and head the ball home. And the best part was watching the goalie like. She had her both arms. She I got like it. Make, I got it. I yep, got it. Making, I don't making got that it. like basket motion, like just kind of phantom making that after the ball's already going in. And she, like she knew what she did, right? Like she's like, yeah. ah, I sat back and should not have done that. It, so if you, uh, if, good, if you, good on Larson. If you rewatch the uh, the lead up, who crossed that? Katie Hauk. If you yeah. watch Katie Hauk, she hesitated uh, on that right before that cross yeah. just to give uh, Larson a little extra time yeah that's a veteran move right there and hawk's one of those players that we we won't have back next season uh it, um but uh and and we're gonna miss her free kicks and and crosses like this for sure uh but that's a savvy veteran move right there to recognize the timing on that run um uh you know what like th- this is what i was talking about in that in the previous game where uh the billikens really allowed both Georgetown and Penn State 
a lot of space in the midfield to run and get downhill. Mm -hmm. And it really made me nervous. And I don't think it once bit us in the ass. Um, no, just, just basically on that last one. Right. Um, I th- or what was it the the third or fourth one uh, where how came up how came up quite a bit into the attacking half yeah and, and we didn't have anybody back and they were able to make a long run but it um, was it was more of like I think that was that was the fourth one it felt it, less about getting caught up field is is sitting back yeah no I I know what you mean yeah like and, and there were there were there were a few times where they did sit back a little too much and let them have a little too much space to operate. Um, one of those was about seven minutes left in the first half. Kaylin Wolf, another nice looking player for Penn State. Um, she had some space on a long run and hit the far post uh, with about seven minutes half. So so it hit the outside of the post, right? Like it wasn't one of those where you, it was an inch, you know, she was off by a little bit, but but still, you know, not it wouldn't have taken a whole lot for this to be a three one game at halftime. And uh, and luckily that wasn't the case. Yeah, I uh, uh, the post was uh, was really nice to us today. Yeah, what well, was it twice they hit it? Although one of them, I don't know, if she intended that to be a shot. I think it was a cross that got. Uh, maybe maybe she was going at the goal. It was it, it kind of looked like a cross that got a, a, you know away from her a little bit. Um, wow. like like a late season. I think STL City scored in their last game like that. Uh the sixty fifth minute. Uh, Gaby Island. But she put three different uh, Penn State defenders on Gaby Island, and uh, uh, she just found the perfect spot. Yeah, and th- this looked like her softest goal of the season. Like, like this was the one seeing where eye single. I, I, <laughs> I just don't know. I don't know how it got through. Like, I, I well, you watched it a couple times, and you're like, th- okay, this was the Big Ten goalie of the year. Like, like this is another one. Yeah. Where it was like this was not a hard hit shot at all. It, it's she, this is the this kind of goal is in the vein of the Katie Hauk goals, like it, where it's you're it's you're Emily Gaby's playing women's soccer really well here on this goal mm-hmm. because it's just it, it's the size difference between the goal and the player in goal. Again, that goal is. I, I'm just saying, See, but like, she hit it on the near great, side, and yeah. and the the goal, you know, like the goal. There wasn't a lot of room here, and she didn't hit it, it very. The goalie hard. didn't see it. The goal. The the goal. He got it. Was? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and there they, were a few players kind of screening. Sure. Yeah. But I, it's like I said. Like I'm not. I'm not. You know, saying anything bad about women. I'm just saying that there are some goals that would not go in 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 men's soccer just like there are some baskets that won't go up in men's basketball like we're going in women's basketball it's the thing it's the, the way. You, i've heard you say this a couple times a season and the one thing i would say is is women's soccer that much higher scoring than men's soccer because you would stand a reason that if if the that that were the the case mm, no wouldn't... but that, i think it's the the size of the ball but again i would uh you, you're gonna get me in trouble because uh, I, I would <laughs> I, I, I would i would make the uh, I've never understood. Never mind. Screw it. Um, let's talk about the good times. Um, what a goal in the 71st minute from Hannah Larson. By the way, because what led to this was a, a foul, I think we need yeah. to discuss the officiating in this yeah. game. This, so, so, so she drew the foul, right? Like, so yes. she's, she's, this she's was doing a foul. A, yes, it was definitely a foul. You can't forearm shiver in the back. You just can't. Correct. But how many bad calls both ways yeah. were there in this game? Like, what did I see? Did I text you in the first half that, like, there were two calls? Or did I tweet it where it was like, there were two calls and, and I couldn't comprehend what the ref even saw so that was that was right around the time too where there were there were even like throw-ins right like i think they gave penn they, state like yes two throw-ins in a row that penn state just grabbed and threw in and they played and i was like that's our ball like i i, yeah. I was I, I you know look i'm i'm watching this game and i'm like i'm it's on a screen i'm not there it's just me i don't have a second pair of eyes on it and i'm kind of like I, I, I could have sworn that was our throw. And that I happened still like think twice we have a better view. Seconds. 
we still have a better better view at home than the ref and we, and, we and the announcers because they're looking at a monitor. We're looking at a large TV. Well, and the thing that kind of like reassured me that I was right is the body language from the slew players who were kind of like, wait, 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 that's ours. Like you could see it both times. Like, yeah. like they were they were ready to go take that throw in. So yeah, I mean, this the whole and the worst one was right after this play. Oh, yeah, way, we're getting there. But I don't but want to take all... anything away from Larson's free kick because it was no, a not at screamer. all. It was a true foul. Uh it was a and it was it was a a beautiful goal. And I, I kind of felt like I had felt like the equalizer was coming. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, I'm sorry, this was the this, this was, was the, the go ahead goal. Up. Yeah. I when she got that foul, it was in such a perfect place. I was like, yeah, this is this is this is this is a great chance. This is this is yeah. the, the shot that can go in and um sure as shit. She buried it. She hit that ball so well. She placed yeah. it perfectly. She hit it hard, put just enough spin on it. Man, oh man, did she put that. As McDermott would say, a goal in any league in the world, you know, like just she put it where it had to go. Um yeah, <laughs> like I don't know what else to say about that shot. It was perfect. And I, I always love when, like, you know, she's the one who had to hit the turf after that uh that foul, and she's the one who got to take the free kick and benefit from it. So I was like, when that happens too. It's a nice symmetry because Larson has spent a lot of time getting, you know, thrown into the ground lately, um, sacrificing herself for the team. And and uh, she reaped the rewards this time and absolutely deserved everything about that one. How how do you think Bob Ramsey would describe this next penalty call against the Billikens? He would have been out of his mind, apoplectic. He would have been screaming. He would have been screaming, Earl. Like, like he at first he would have been like, explain this to me. How is that possible? You know, what am I seeing here? It, it, and then absolutely he would have called it the worst call he's ever seen. It, it, I, I mean, what did you, what did she see? I have no idea. I, I really like it because I, I even re, this is one where I kind of re, I it's the only time in the game I rewound it because even though we got a little bit of a replay. I thought because who who went down on this play was it um, one of Slew's players was down for a minute. Yes, no, that was uh, well they she, went she, down, but she like, got her foot stomped on. I thought I don't know what exactly happened, but I just know that like she went down. Like was it I think Lawler? She got crossed up? No, that was that was or Stram. Some somebody. It, I I thought somebody went down. They oh, yes, they went down because they got crossed up. Like it was a great run into the box. Yeah. And she beat one of our players. That player went down and Mm -hmm. then someone came. I don't remember who came over, but someone came over and, and, and slid and made a great tackle Mm -hmm. and the ball was cleared. And then next thing, you know, I see the, uh, the ref pointing to the spot and, and I just don't understand. Like, first of all, the player didn't, the player that fell, wasn't anywhere near the attacker um no. and then the the slide tackle was beautiful but i just i i have no clue what in god's name she saw this would not have been a like like i always think like okay if this happened in the middle of the field would they have called it a foul would it have been a car you know like i'm always like when the, when a pk is given i'm always trying to assess like is that a foul anywhere in the field at any time of the game this wasn't a foul to me. It was just kind of like a play on situation. No, there was nothing to even call play on. Yeah, I, I, I don't even I, know. I right. like. I don't know how we're talking. Like, I don't know if there's a way to talk about this. Yeah. In the general way you talk about a missed call. Right. Because there was just nothing. There, it didn't happen. It was. Yeah. A, it was. It was fake. It was fugazi. It was smoke and mirrors it was confusing and, and like yeah the 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 first so the slew player was down and you're kind of like okay i hope she's all right i guess we'll have a kick from here and then oh no i knew sudden, i knew she all of a sudden right you away. see you see slew players like go, with their arms out like arguing with the ref cuz like i i saw her signal right like she put her arm and pointed at the the spot and i was kind of like wait a minute yeah Maybe I'm maybe I saw that wrong. And then all of a sudden you see the player slew players arguing with her. And I was like, oh my God, they're giving her a PK. And 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 you know, the announcers who weren't very good were miles behind. They had no idea what was going on. They had 
zero clue there that, that, but that was kind of a good sign too right because neither of them saw anything like they yeah. were completely confused um so so like yeah nobody saw anything none of us saw anything there was there was nothing it, i will never the, understand what the ref actually thought she saw this is when you need that guy from that uh that pass it on commercial i touched the ball coach like you need <laughs> you need that you need that yeah. on on penn state yeah, oh, yeah. sportsmanship, guys! Come on. No, yeah, I would have. Did... I would have certainly taken the PK, and uh, man, I would. I would much rather take Emily Percelli in goal. She, you know, thank her. I, I, I thank God for her because, like, <laughs> this would have been the greatest injustice of this. Yes, game, right? if, if that were the equalizer, and then with that much time left to play. I, I would have been furious. So for, for Percelli to save this, it's like, oh my God. Like, I was just so grateful for that yes. because I, I could not have had the game decided on that on that play, on that have non-foul you, PK. Have you ever watched a referee be so bad and not actually materially affect the outcome of the game? Yeah. Like, <laughs> nothing, like, like, she made so many bad calls yeah. and the and both teams uh negated those calls. Yeah. That's it right. was incredible. Right. She got bailed out. Basically, she got bailed out by two really good teams. Unbelievable. <laughs> that's what happened. I, I Percelli, my goodness. I, yeah. I mean, that is that's that's the kind of thing you tell your grandchildren about. Yeah, I mean, like, oh God! I mean, if they had held on too, like, oh. how, how many times did you go back to that play? But e- even it's though, like, even though they it's like when you watch was... hockey, it's like, yeah. oh, remember that save? They tie the game. It's like, <laughs> shut right. up, dude. Yeah, yeah. Put a pin in that one. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, she. You know, look, she faced twenty four shots today, right? Like, you're not going to play all of them perfectly. I think is is what I texted to you at one point, but no. like this one, a PK. Uh, she she absolutely played this one perfectly. Saved saved everybody. Saved the ref. Saved her own team in this one. Uh, just absolutely huge. But unfortunately, Zach, eighty seventh minute, uh, yeah. Penn State equalizes on a header in traffic off a free kick. Yeah, this one uh, added injury to insult mm-hmm. uh, because on this play, I believe this was when. Uh, Hannah Sawyer got a concussion and I want to say also the, who was it? Uh, Abby, who was the one Lawler Lawler was having issues as well. And I think it all stemmed from that equal or that. Yeah. That equalizer. Yeah. Yeah. And Percelli went down for a minute there too. So, Stu actually did yeah okay so Stu Stu said uh the w- women's soccer had two players injured and unable to contribute in overtime Anna Lawler tried to go but had trouble breathing after being injured on the game tying goal so yeah it was it was Lawler on that one and then Sawyer suffered a concussion in the second half so I'm not certain what play that would have been but Lawler was definitely hurt on this play I mean it was you know there's a lot of bodies flying in front of the net um and uh, yeah, unfortunately, it went in for Penn State this time. Ninety uh, eighth minute, Peyton Linehan from Penn State. Uh, her speed that that said yeah. speed, you know, she was a problem all, all day. She she and the other um, who did I say earlier? McBean, yeah, right. McBean was the goal scorer, but Linehan was the one like up the flanks who was just so fast and getting around the defense, you know. Yeah, uh, she got a goal after a long run by Olivia Borgen on the counter. Hauk yeah. had come up on the attack, as you mentioned earlier, and Slew didn't have anyone in the neighborhood when that ball came through. Uh, and this was the one where I thought Percelli, yeah, just you know, sell out. Go, I, go I, I thought there. she, I thought that's what she was doing. Yeah, uh, I thought but, she was but, a little late coming yeah. off her line, but right, uh, but and she had been. You know what? She had been super aggressive all game in this one, and I thought kind of to her detriment. But again, like the Billikens no, I mean, have she, to do better. There, there were a lot that worked out for her, right? Yes. Like, like, you know, like like she she stopped a few like sure goals by being pretty aggressive. Um, yes. At, at different times in this game, and I and thought then that's there what were was a happening here. But you're right. There was just a that, yeah. just enough of a beat 
on this one um, that that allowed you know a really good goal scorer Linehan to k- make a move to her left and then uh, just had to yeah nobody left to beat after that. Yeah, one thing that was interesting we talk about tough days and I thought our back line um, like our wing backs uh, were 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 really really good in that second half, but I thought in that first half and then in and then at times in the second. Uh, they were getting beat off the dribble by Penn State players. And, and in the second half, you could see where they adjusted and, and figured out where Penn State was was dribbling through us and and really made an effort to get their body in between the ball and the Penn State attacker. I think that's right. I, I think there had to be an adjustment. You know, Indiana and Georgetown were one thing. Like, those were those were really good teams. Right away, you could see that there was, like, especially with Linehan and McBean, there was more speed um with this Penn State team that from the start right like like that was clear in the first half and they they were probably the better team in the first half I thought SLU was the better team in the second half to be honest with you um but um yeah I, I guess neither of those statements are very controversial but overall I thought all of a sudden the pace of the game just everything seemed to be more in SLU's favor in that second half and and they it, it's like they had kind of caught up right like they kind of adjusted to it but yeah, these two were kind of a problem, and and it's part of the reason, Zach. I mean, twenty four shots, right, for Penn State. It's it's that's a big number. You don't see Slew allow that many shots very often, and uh, Slew only had thirteen. Penn State put eight of them on goal. Slew put four on goal. Uh, Penn State had three corners. Slew one second game in a row where we only had one or two corners, and then fouls. Slew had sixteen, and Penn State twelve. Um, yeah, man, look. I told you in the moment, like I was devastated when that 87th minute goal went in Devast, Like that's yeah, man, the lowest I felt watching a game in a long time, just cause it was like, like by this point, a couple minutes left, I was standing. I had like my laptop thrown on the guy. I wasn't paying attention to that anymore. I was just focused on watching these last few minutes, ready for them to close it out. And then as soon as they, they had that, you know, it, it yeah, it was gut gutted because of that. But since then, I've kind of been able to kind of put the season in perspective. And like we we were saying earlier, the, the, the team has been a joy to watch, um, both in the short term, like this season, and in the long term to watch the program progress every single year. And then after this loss, it, it, which had to be gut-wrenching for everybody involved, the the vibes were so positive like everything you saw on social media everything you like could see on video and everything they just they it, they just accepted like we put it all out there we gave it our best shot we went toe to toe with one of the best teams in the country and penn state absolutely is going to be in the mix you know for this national title there's going to be what eight teams left now and they're they're just as much of a threat as anybody else left and um and yeah they were right there man they were right there. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I was uh, I think I was on such a, an adrenaline high like throughout that entire yeah. game. I mean, I think once uh, man, I was so vocal during that entire game. Like I haven't been that like locked into a Billiken game on TV since the 19 A10 tournament run mm. basketball. Like I was pacing back and forth in here, like the entire get after that third goal went in. I was not after the Billiken took Billikens took the lead. I was pacing the entire time. Yeah, but then after the game, I was on such an adrenaline high. I just kind of like I was like, oh yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. like I was like, oh okay, that game's over. I'm gonna go do something else, and then I finally. Got back home and I sat down and I go, shit. Yeah, and then it hit you. Yeah, it was, man. Man, what a freaking season, dude. That nineteen was fun. three and two, you know, nineteen three and two, undefeated in a ten play. Um, they were unbeaten in eighteen games leading up to this one. They had won the last twelve before it. I mean, they they were really a special team. Uh, I think what did they win twenty last year? Um, I think they had one more win in the non-conference. And uh, and so even though you don't have that 20th win, I, you know, I, I think everybody would look at this and say this was 
overall the 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 stronger performance right like going deeper in the tournament um every year now they're playing a tough non-conference schedule i've heard or i saw somewhere that penn state is coming to sleep yes. next year to play yes the billikens will uh will get their chance to do the red dawn avenge me yeah <laughs> uh scene uh but yeah i mean yeah. like looking at this roster man i mean it's there's a lot coming back. Ellie Pelusic's back. Jordan Gary, uh, you know, Nina Preusser was was involved a lot. She, uh, I, I think she's going to be really good too. Yeah. Um, Hannah Sawyer, of course. Um, uh, you've got Becca Walterman. I I, I think the, the the Slu has. Uh, I don't know who followed us or if she has committed us or anything, but there's a goalie that uh, followed us on Twitter. And the the pinned tweet is just an unbelievable save. Um, I I don't know if that means anything to anyone, but I thought it was cool as shit. Um, Eva Schreiber, uh, you know, I mean, like going back through it, Izzy Lubert, Emily Gaby. Uh, I mean, these are Alyssa Bacchius had a ton of minutes in the midfield for a freshman. Yeah. Uh, Claire Nicholas had a lot of minutes. She's mm -hmm. uh, you know in the midfield too, so. I think this team's going to be just fine next year. You add in, there's a, you know, obviously you, you always wonder if any of the old uh, St. Louis kids that, that went away, want to come back home and, sure. and get some PT. Um, there's a few out there. Will, uh, so Percelli should be back. Right. And Kelly did. Oh yeah. Percelli didn't, uh, did, did she do the, uh, the senior? She didn't No, She did not do senior day. Okay. I guess she's back. Yeah, so so like she didn't, Kelly didn't. So I I oh, think yeah. yeah, we I I think you know we we have a lot back. You know, like Julia this. Simon's back, right? Uh, uh, this I mean this, this is this is a pretty yeah. it's a pretty loaded team, right? I mean, like no. yeah, you lose you lose some core players, sure, but you know, like I said, they did the year before as well. I mean, they're they're just it it's it's unimaginable that they wouldn't win the A ten again, right? Um, let alone hey, what's the, the what. what What's the difference between a graduate student and a sixth year? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, uh, sixth year would be. Are you just taking classes? At that's that point? that's the COVID bonus year on a grad student, right? Like that's. Oh wait, my god! I don't even know. That's probably yeah. also an, in, an injury red shirt year yeah. or something too, right? So, so that's there would have been. That's, yeah, right. That's crazy. Yeah, man. So what uh, so a they're, season! They're gonna have a lot coming back. They're gonna. It's you know. It's gonna. It's gonna be great. Um, they're gonna be a lot of fun again, and and I I just can't wait to see this program continue to progress. And and now now we're look like what we we said to uh to Coach Allen last week, yeah. right? Like we brought up that Rutgers game, and yeah. and he, and and he was just like that was eye opening for yes. us, right? Like there was just another level, and now you see them playing with that level of team right here like yeah like you Penn, this is this is the top tier like that we saw today and we had them on the ropes about to win this game with three minutes left you you saying that reminded me of something else i want to say is you you go back to that byu game yes and byu gets up early in that game and what you learned in that game you bring it to that penn state game a hundred percent like if you yeah. don't play BYU, I don't know if you have the that 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 knowledge base to go ahead and figure out how to solve Penn State the way they did. Yeah, that that's that's absolutely right. And by the way, BYU is one of the teams left in yes. the Elite Eight. They're going to be right. playing UNC. You've got Florida State and Pitt coming out um, of of that region. Um, Penn State, obviously, in our region, and then the one seed is Clemson. Uh, which has a local, by the way, uh, former Billiken, uh, John Duff's daughter is on that team. She's one of their stars, and uh, and they're a one seed. And then you also have Stanford and Nebraska, a team that Slew beat um, earlier this year in the Elite Eight. So when you look around this Elite Eight, that's three teams Slew played. We went one and two against them, um, and then you know one of those was was BYU, and one of those was Penn State. So uh, this program's there. Man, I mean, this the, they're in they're in that that top echelon now. Um, I don't know. I know there's a few teams at the very top, you know, and like yes, Penn State 
you know, outshot SLU and things like that today. I think there are metrics that you could say that they're still a stronger team at this point, but uh, they the SLU has made the jump, man. I mean, they're, they're, they're there. They're in the mix with these top teams in the country now. It's pretty impressive, and, and it only gets better when you continue. Like you said, to make the NCAA tournament and make noise, you – you start to, you know, uh, get on the radar of the players that can help you make that jump. You know, yep. you yep. get back on the radar of, um, you you know, you look at even even the, the bigger names out of St. Louis, the ones like, you know, you look at John Duff's daughter at Clemson. Uh, you look at uh, like the Ava Tankersleys that went to, I think her name's Ava, um, that went to Arkansas. Um, you know, maybe reach and get a little bit higher player out of St. Louis, uh, even though we are getting the best out of St. Louis. I mean, we have been, but, yeah. uh, you can maybe, uh, further, uh, hone in that recruiting base. Pete, a team that is on the opposite trajectory of women's soccer and, and a team that I really have no interest in, di- like, dis- like, I don't feel like deciphering any of this shit like i just want to i want to give them the like the swimming and diving treatment right now because honestly they don't they don't deserve like this program doesn't deserve read a few scores and move on Um, yeah i I just it's the same thing man yeah but you know but we you know we also know it's even though we just spent a a big deal of time on women's soccer for the last time this season because they absolutely deserve it they've earned it uh, we we love them. Um, we're we're moving on to men's basketball now, Zach, and and they did pull out a win on Thursday the sixteenth at the Myrtle Beach Invitational against Wyoming, seventy nine sixty nine. But it was it was it was tough after that. Yeah, uh, Wyoming got out to a fourteen to four start, and it felt like their size and rebounding might be too much for SLU. This would be a problem in the next two games. It sure would. Uh, SLU chipped away though. Uh, it, it, they, they, it was a lot of sincere Parker and Tim Dalger in this one. Yeah, it was. And then, you know, after that 14 and four start, you wind up going into halftime down one, and then they go on to shoot 58% in the second half. Um, Parker, by the way, 22 points, nine of 18 from the field, three of five from three. He made a free throw, eight rebounds. He was also the leading rebounder for SLU. Left the game early, though, Zach, with an injury. And as it turns out, he's now out indefinitely with a broken bone in his foot, um, although it sounds like it might not be season-ending. So they're going to reevaluate him when they get back to St. Louis, um, I guess, Monday. Um, not great. Not I'm great. So I'm mean, so excited like, for this to be was, another excuse for this program. Man, he was firing on all cylinders in this yeah. game and, and really feeling it. And then all of a sudden, you just saw him – there was no contact or anything and he he just he kind of limped over tried to get back up by the bench and then and then got back down again and uh and yeah it was it was it was pretty awkward it, i thought he had rolled an ankle right like that's kind of what it looked like yeah but, uh, sounds that, worse than that there were there were so many like dolger was so good in this one he was 17 points, five of seven from the field. He hit two of three threes. He hit his free throws, four rebounds, three steals. He did a little bit of everything in this one. Um, uh, yeah, he, he has the capability to do this for sure. Um, Thames Hargrove each had nine. Uh, Thames did it in half as many minutes. I thought Thames was awesome in this game. I have seen enough from him at this point to have a hard time leaving him off the floor for long stretches. I mean, he's, he's, I want to develop that guy, right? Like yes. that's a, that's a player that I'm watching going like I see nothing but upside with him, man. He's he's clearly bigger um in every way than when he came into this program. Uh he moves really well. He does a lot of things. He can shoot, he can take it to the rim, got a long stride, disruptive defender. Like I I, I he rebounds like far from a perfect player. He's really getting his first experience. He's already played more minutes this season than he did last season, I bet. Uh, uh man, easily. Man, I I think you got to you got to run him more. I, he he was just I I won't say he was like awesome here, but like everybody watching this guy knows like he he can really play. 
Yeah, I just I would plug him directly in where Parker was. I mean, they have the same skill set. Yeah, they're 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 a different kind of player for sure. But like, yeah, I I I want I just want to see him get more development opportunity. Right? Oh yeah, and I think if we're gonna be like not good, uh, you want to be not good with your youngsters, right? Um, you know, you don't want to see a team that is like Tim Dalger, Mike Meadows. Jimerson, Hargrove, and then pick another guy. And you don't want to see that be the majority of your minutes and be a 500 team. So I guess the the comparison would be that 2010-2011 team when we lose Kwame Mitchell and Willie Reed for the year. Yes. And then all of a sudden you've got to run with those freshmen, right? Like Mike McCall, Dwayne Evans. You're, you're running that class of guys. Uh, Jordaire instead of uh being able to rely on veterans and they still um, played more cohesive defense and offense than this team did yeah <laughs> i think that's probably true uh they didn't win a lot of games that year but uh that's fine but yeah you could at least see like uh you could at least see it there the the makings of something uh jimerson man he had a tough day one field goal attempt zero points it's it look it's it's there are days where a guy is not on, but for a guy to just not be there, it was, you know, and, and credit to Wyoming for kind of taking him out of this one. But um, yeah, man, he, he, we, we had talked, we've talked earlier this season about how he seems content to not force things. Right. And if it's a game where he's not getting good looks, tough defensive matchup, he's passing more, he's looking to get more at the rim. But uh, but yeah, they just took him out of this game completely. Um, Wyoming really, uh, you know, struggled with with their depth in this one. Yeah, yeah, they did. They got really good production out of the top five, and uh, the kid from Kansas City, the freshman Cam Manyawu, Manyawu. Uh, I think they were again, saying his name wrong his the name. entire time too. Well, he had fifteen and twelve, and it, it was his third double double in as many games for Wyoming. So they've got a player, by the way, in him. He had originally committed to Indiana State, so that's that's kind of brutal for the Sycamores. But uh, Wyoming got cold in the second half. Slew's defense defensive pressure really got to them, and it actually looked the most effective with both Meadows and Medley out there. But when you run them for the defense, you kind of lose a little bit on offense. I think so. That's going to be a tough one for Ford to solve this year. And, they clearly haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, but yeah, you're right. Wyoming just does. They had no de- outside of the top five. I, I think they got six bench points in this game. And I think they all came from one guy. How frustrating is it to watch a guy like Jimmy Bell Jr., uh, a guy like Lacina Triore, uh, all these big men that have transferred out uh, after their freshman year uh, do so well? And while the Billikens get out rebounded by 13, including 22 offensive boards given up. Yeah, it's tough, Zach. It's it's tough to see these guys move on. Um, Traore, like, look, you didn't see much from him freshman year, but then he goes out to Long Beach and he's a double double machine. You know, he's like a con- all conference player. Jimmy Bell's been great at Mississippi State, and like, I I, I know it seemed like slew wanted to hang on to him and couldn't yeah. um and I, you know I'd, i think we, they wanted to bring him back yeah right i i so i i don't think that was a situation where they ran him off or anything like that um unfortunately it just it just you know he had to go to a juco and then make his way back up you just wish he could have come back <laughs> could have come back to give us these productive seasons now that he's an upperclassman he's in great shape he's playing well and it's tough to see bigs that you could have had, should have had, um, and uh, and they're 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 doing great things for other programs while we are uh, just not rebounding. Yeah, no, we did force uh, nineteen turnovers though. Force nineteen turnovers, but we were out rebounded by thirteen. You know, forty six to 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 thirty three, and Wyoming had twenty two offensive rebounds. I think. Um, the, luckily those only translated into 15 second chance points, but that's the most offensive boards allowed since Ford took over at SLU. And he knew that immediately, by the way, in that post-game interview. Um, so even though there were some positives to take from that one, this, you know, this game, 
definitely some alarm bells too, Zach. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought the fan base was was pretty pleased with this one. Um, I think I think especially coming off the uh, the win in which they don't score from the mm-hmm. field in the last 12, 13 minutes, right? Uh, to come back and 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 kind of finish it off well, uh, even without Parker, uh, left some a, a good taste in people's mouths. Yeah, I think so. Um, people, you know, look, we knew Wyoming was not great. They really struggled last year. I think they should be a little bit better this year. But um, we were worried about their size. And the fact that this isn't like, you know, a buy game. This is this is from a, a good the team from a good conference, the Mountain West. That's kind of a peer conference and, in, in, you know, b- being outside the power conferences for the uh, for the A-10. Um so people were a little bit nervous. And I think overall, if you had told people before the game a 10 point win, anybody would have taken that. Yeah. I, I you know, it just, it, it seemed like the team was playing more cohesively, uh, yeah. playing legitimate defense, uh, moving the ball, getting good shots. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, that was the only game of the tournament in which the Billikens really, uh, played well yeah yeah unfortunately it was because the next day you lose 78 68 to vermont in the semifinal matchup on friday the 17th and man oh man zach this first half was just brutal from a defensive standpoint slew gives up 47 points vermont's slash line is 64 percent from the field 50 percent from three 75 percent from the free throw line uh it felt it, you know it it was under 50 but it felt like at least 50 the way that that first half went i mean it just the it feels like like there's nothing competitive about these two games to talk about like zero uh, i just did not find us to be competitive no, the, both so both the Vermont game and then the one you know you and I just watched with the reason we're recording an hour later than we normally do on Sunday evening. Um, Thanks for nothing, Billikens. Yeah, so glad, so glad we uh, we could have just re- started recording at our normal time. Yes, we, yes but, we could have. Uh, but these were games that we were give or take down by about ten the whole time, right? Like, like yeah. it just felt like every time we'd get a little bit close. They would just hit a three or we would do something bad and um, it, the really frustrating games to watch, especially like in, in the one today, Oh, uh, the, well, yesterday as you're listening, but yeah, the Wichita state game where not only did they keep us at arm's distance, but then kind of ran away with it at the end. And that, that was really frustrating. And this one, Zach slew came out quickly in the second half, despite, you know, a, a rough first half, quick five Oh run to start the second half. Vermont calls a timeout and then they get everything under control, sustain their margin. Uh, Slew did get to within seven and then had multiple opportunities to make it even closer, but they missed free throws. They missed a couple three pointers, missed a couple layups, and then Vermont always had a response. So like it was a game where they teased you just enough, right? You're like, Oh, it's seven. And we, and we had chances to make it five, three, two points and just couldn't do it. This, this team really is Travis Ford's tenure as Billiken head coach in a nutshell. It teases you with a little success, but it just does not sustain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these last two games, you can really bitch slaps yeah. you back down to earth. Oh yeah. Boy, did it ever. Um, Vermont really, I mean, what I, I was really impressed by them. I thought they were a disciplined, patient, good team. Their spacing on offense was yeah. excellent. They were content to shoot if we gave them any space, and they would shoot deep threes and hit them. And then if they had any room to operate inside, they were just coming off screens for easy layups. They would just slip somebody through there and uh, either lay it in or get to the foul line. And it was like that the whole game. You know, like they they just kind of patiently picked us apart. Um, I, I was, was really was hoping. For a defensive renaissance, and I I just don't see any like we talk about the women's soccer team. There's not incremental improvement. No, there isn't. And Zach, I mean, there were uh, 
we saw a lot of emotional responses to this yes. right on the on on to, on Twitter, the message board, every everywhere, slew fans congregate online, as I say, um, and that includes us. But uh, I, I want to know, like, where do your frustrations lie with this one? And and I I definitely noticed, right? Like, all it seems like the 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 feeling from the the frustrated fans has carried over from last year. Like, it didn't it didn't reset. It didn't like there was no goodwill built up. In the off season, it seems like it's just right back to where we were in March of last year, and I, I kind of I'm wondering where you're at and why you think that is. I think that again, you look at you know, uh, I mean, everybody can can deal with a rebuild um, when you go and you you achieve your goals the year before, and I think. Billiken fans wanted, and I, I I often try to speak, uh, try to be the the audience, uh, and I do my best. But of course, I'm a crazy person, so my <laughs> my thoughts are always a little more out there. But I think, you know, again, I think Billiken fans just wanted to have fun with this team, and I think they would have been okay. Again, a rebuild would have been fine had you made the tournament last year. Even yeah. just making the tournament with a, an at-large bid of the tournament last year and a loss in the first round would have built you up plenty of goodwill yeah. to go through this year. And and who knows what the roster looks like if you do make the tournament, right? Um, but to just like, you know, you it's again, we're going to run up and down the court. We're going to shoot 33s a game. Bullshit. Like, I don't, you can talk to me about the injury to the injury situation. You can talk, don't, don't even begin to talk to me about the eligibility situation because that's, 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 that's all the, that's the staff. That's the, the support staff. That's, that's the entire athletic department. Um, But to not stick to your word, to not, send your guys out there and hoist 33s a game because you said so it is, is enough for me. Like you can't, yeah. you're not going to do that eight years in a row. Like I, it's like squeak in basketball. I swear if you guys rag on me 20 or 30 more times, I'm out of here. Like I stop lying. Like stop telling us you're going to do one thing and not do it. I had a, I, 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 I have enough people in my life to do that. Like I don't need, my the the basketball coach of my college team to do that yeah i i get what you're saying and i really have a hard time rebutting or arguing any of that you know it, it's, it's not the result like i could be happy watching these young guys go out and, and play hard defense you know whip the ball around take jack up 53s a game press the living shit out of people and i would enjoy a 500 season i'd be okay with it yeah. I can't watch a bunch of fifth year seniors slow the damn game down, press once every five possessions, maybe, and lose by 19 to Wichita State, who, by the way, if we're keeping track at home, Vermont um, spends annually uh, less. Oh, pro- Travis Ford's salary is about what Vermont spends on basketball total. The entire program. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I know, man, it's, it's frustrating. I know it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Um, you know, I, I, I really, I, I'm glad that right now the narrative is taking hold. Like I, I saw this twice on Twitter tonight from two different sources, not sources, but two different people like unrelated saying we actually start a lot of experience in this yes. roster, you know, and, and we have, there, there was some credit coming into the season because it's like, we lost a ton of fourth and fifth year seniors last year, grad transfers, really experienced players last season. And this year we were going to be young and inexperienced and hungry. But then when you step back and think about it, Hargrove and Jimerson are both fifth-year guys. Um, you've got 
two grad transfers. And that's that that was four of our starters right there. Yeah. And then the other one being a sophomore um, in uh, Hughes, I guess, who played many, many minutes last season. He was he got probably the most minutes for a freshman since Yuri Collins. Yeah. For generally. Yeah. He doesn't play freshman. It's on. I mean, Goodwin, French, Collins all played a lot as freshmen. But yeah, generally his freshmen don't play a whole lot. Uh, Medley's getting a lot of minutes this year. He'll have plenty more than Hughes did last year, but still, um, that's a really experienced starting lineup. Yes. And, and even though they haven't necessarily played together with two exceptions a whole lot, that's a that's a ton of experience in your starting five. Yeah. And and so it's it's really hard to swallow all this. You know, that's this is a new team, a lot of turnover, blah blah blah. I mean, like that's this, that, this that is- doesn't that doesn't really sit well. If I hear that this is a remix one more time, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. And it's not a remix. It's Roseanne Barr singing the national anthem. <laughs> I, well, I kind of think like if it, if this is a remix, then why does it sound the same? <laughs> <Yeah. Do you? laughs> it's all the same. It's all the same. It's, things. Yes. It's not a remix. Like literally like how many, first of all, like I want to get this out of the way because it's a non- it, it, it's it, it matters not at all in the grand scheme of this. Um, the ju- uh, do you want to read down the stats? Did we do the stats for Vermont? No, we haven't. Okay, let's go ahead and read that down. Jimmer said had 18 points. Good game. Uh, six of 15, three of eight from three, three of three from the free throw line. He had four assists too, um, which I like. Hargrove had 15 and five. Dahlgren had 10 and six. Slew only had eight turnovers, but they could only force nine out of Vermont, and Vermont out-rebounded Slew by four, 33 to 29. Vermont's shooting did cool down a bit, but they still ended up shooting 56% for the game. Um, and Slew was 10 of 18, which is 56%, Zach, from three. If we were aiming to attempt 30 per game, kind of seems like a good day you're, to have tried that. You're working against yourself, Travis Ford. Send your guys out there. And let him throw the ball at the hoop from beyond the three point line. Yeah, until this this Wichita State game, they were actually hitting threes at a pretty good rate. I mean, fifty six percent. You're not going to have many games where you attempt eighteen and hit that percentage. I mean, that's that's great. That's like, yeah, all all I can say about that is shoot more, right? Like like shoot more. You're not going to shoot fifty six percent with thirty attempts that often. But like, come on, man, like go for it. 88 69 nice loss versus Wichita State. It was tied 14 14 early. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 to say about this one? This was the third place game. It's it which kind watch, of didn't feel right. No, what well, like you said, the this is the the athletic department spin is well we finished in the top half. Yeah. We finished in fourth. I love that about these uh you know, it's an 18 eight team tournament, not a round robin, but there's a consolation bracket, three guaranteed games. So you can go one and two and finish fourth in the top top half of it, right? Um, so that's what we did, right? You you win your first game, so you're in the top half guaranteed, and then you lose the next the Travis two and they were Ford never close. special is what they call that. So fourth you're, place. You're right. We were tied 14 14 early, and then right about the time I was able to just turn the game on. Wichita State rips off a 9-0 run and uh never looked back. 23-14 and and slew really I they can't lost even think of what Hughes in this one. I Hughes never returned. You know, I'm not sure if I even noticed that. Yeah, I know. He played Hugh okay, Hughes played oh you're right. 10 oh wow. Okay, yep. I, I did. I uh, now that I'm looking at this, I did remember that because I remember looking at his stat line at halftime and thinking, uh, you know, I, I want to see more of him. But what 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 did he go out? I didn't see what he went out on. I have no idea. Okay, they, nobody said anything until they noted that he had, had, did not return in so the second had half. Eight they said, uh, "Oh wait, they said uh, illness." Oh, I you know what I did I did see that he was playing through sickness. Uh, he had eight points in ten minutes, and maybe they just decided it's not worth it anymore. 
Like maybe they just decided this game's out of hand. Who cares? I don't know. Uh, but I I did see that this he was whole sick. program's hope, out of hand, hope, Peter. Hopefully it's illness and not injury, you know, because like he did have a couple tweaks and things the first couple games. He had ice on his knee. He slipped in that first game with a slippery floor. It looked like he kind of pulled his groin a little bit. I'm hoping it's not injury and it actually is, uh, you know, just being a little bit under the weather, hoping, but I don't know for sure. If I'm looking at our stat sheet, Zach, Terrence Hargrove, got to give him credit. He'd had a great second half. He played hard. He finished with 21 points on eight of 16 shooting perfect from the free throw line. He had seven rebounds, only turned it over once. I I, I think he had a pretty good 27 minutes. Um, yeah. I, I think the only thing you can really dock him for is uh, missing easy uh, attempts and nearly killing himself. That uncontested dunk. I think he was surprised. He was so open that it, he was like off a, a half step. This... Right, like you could you could see it in his approach. He it, he was like he need he needed to take one dribble, or he he just he was like too far. I don't know. He jumped from a little too far because he he thought he was going to be guarded and would have to make a move, and there was no one there, and and so he didn't. So he just went right at the rim, and it was just off by a half step, basically. Just yeah. do the old uh, when they couldn't dunk, just drop it in. Right. That, that hey. Is that the unintended consequence of uh, eliminating the dunking rule before games? Is people don't know how to go up and finesse it through the hoop anymore? Well, they well they can dunk now, right? They got rid of that a couple of years right, ago. No, but I'm saying like back when you couldn't dunk, you yeah. had to go up and like right, just right, drop right. Just, it in. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. So now like, that they can, yes, they've lost, they've lost yes, the, the, the Christian skill. Leitner kind of finger yeah, roll right at the rim. Exactly. Uh, Del- Delger had 11. Jimerson had 11. Neither of them were particularly efficient. Um, Delger Thames- was certainly not efficient. No, the Thames had eight and six. Like we said earlier, Hughes had eight. Bruce had five, three of them at the free throw. Line. Right um, spot. I thought he had more than that. Honestly, he got into foul trouble. He only played 10 minutes, um, unfortunately, but yeah, I, I, I would have liked to see a little bit more of him. I think Steph came in, had a jolly moment and went out. Yeah, that's right. In the in the first half, yeah, he he just. Uh, I just, he, dude, I'm I'm seeing like, like it's so crazy. It's crazy because you look at like Bruce, and he's got upside, but like you see a lot of Cruz in him. Oh, like where it's just it's so raw that you're like, I don't know if like. I don't know if we can develop that dude. Like you see, Wait, Steph sorry, you, 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 are you talking about Steph or Bruce? Both. You think man. Bruce, like, see, I, I think Bruce, I see the pieces there actually. Oh, like, I, I do. I think... But I just don't know. Like, can it, it just doesn't feel like, well, well here's I don't the have issue, any Zach. trust in the coaching staff. I'm look, here's the issue. It, it, it's 2023, right? Yes. If you get those guys in 2003, fine develop them up and by senior year they're going to be great like they've yeah. got they've got size with bruce especially like he he was he's a guy who i would have if you got him as a freshman he's kind of like uh like an ian vuyukas type where like freshman year he's just got so much size and you could see skill that you're like we've got something here like we can develop him he's going to be a great four-year big really really happy with what we've got here the problem is today the way rosters turn over we haven't shown the willingness to be patient with a big. No. Uh, and, and we've mentioned their names earlier in this episode. Traore is gone. He's a double double machine at, at Long Beach. Um Madani, we ran yes. off. Uh there was uh uh I'm I'm forgetting the name. We I should know, but there was another big uh because there was one every year for a while who would come in as a freshman and then leave. Um we had him on the sh- uh uh shoot, it was just last year, man. Um, anyway, my, my, my point is we've had yeah. one developmental big every year who does not last because you don't, you can't in 2023, they're, they're not willing to give up a roster spot for a second Momo. year developmental big. Yeah. Cisse. Thank you. Momo Cisse. Um, so that's, that's the problem, right? It's like, I, I would be fine with these guys as freshmen. If I thought we were going to have a four year plan behind other big men f- for them but the problem is we, we don't have any bigs 
aside from them on the roster. And we don't have, I don't know if we're going to have the patience to develop them uh, the way they should be. I, I don't know. It, it, the whole situation is just kind of frustrating. And uh, I don't think it was ever supposed to be this way. I don't know what our plan is going to be for bigs. I, I hate the idea of us just like grabbing young bigs every year and them never lasting. Like I want to develop them, but we should be able to do that behind veteran bigs and, and unfortunately don't have that luxury right now. And we really needed size in this one, Zach, because Wichita state had a ton of it and they used it to their advantage. Like they were, they were playing offensively a lot of, for sure. I for thought sure. defensively we were fine against them. Honestly, I just, I think that so like, you're going to look at the, you can like, people are going to look at this box score and be like, Oh, the Billikens were, what, what was it? Um, you know, they shot 35.4% from the field and mm-hmm. they're going to be, Oh yeah, that was, that was the, the, the bigs of Wichita state. No, 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 no. That was Tim Dalger blowing five layups. That yeah. was that was Jimerson um missing a like overcomplicating a layup. Yeah. That was that was Terrence Hargrove missing dunks. Jimerson missed a f- ton of threes too. Yeah. Meadows um, couldn't hit a three. Hargrove. But I'm talking just field goals. Like no, I know. so much of just Oh, uh, that and the turnovers, dude. We would get some momentum. Like nobody stops a run, a, a run from the Billikens better than the Billikens, Pete. And we didn't have a lot of turnovers. We only had ten for the game, which is fine. It's just we seem to time them. Yeah, right when we need that possession. The yes, most. and then and you got, and then the the one play that again I want to bring up. And actually the sequence or whatever you want to call it that I want to bring up that totally inconsequential to the game, but preposterous was a pass that hit off the leg of the referee. Mm -hmm. Wichita state takes a down easy bucket. Yeah. Fast forward Billikens get a bucket on a goaltend. This is what I'm, this is why I don't like replay is a double-edged sword because it's kind of like it's letting the game correct itself and you can't let the game correct itself when you have replay insisting that you change that goaltend that should have been a a a direct makeup call like you can say makeup calls don't exist that's bullshit makeup calls exist that's when a makeup call is necessary only to get a goaltending call against us in which Travis Ford is rightly incensed, not because it wasn't a goaltend, but because like that's, this is insane. Just give us our point back. I mean, I, I think you, you just summarized all of the plays that define this game, right? Like, We've got the ball on the offensive end. A pass goes back to one of our guards, hits off the ref's leg, stays in play, and they wind up with a fast break layup at the other end. We we end up with a goal t- uh, a shot off a goal send that gets called back minutes later. Like I I understand if they go over to the monitors and they're like, yeah yeah yeah, not a goal send. Sorry, got that one wrong right away. I don't love the use of replay slowing down a game in the second half that much or anything. Yeah, why didn't like, they? Why didn't they stop like, the game? Like that doesn't make sense. Why didn't they look at that early? I think if they, I, if they looked at it in the moment and turned it over, I would have been fine because you know, they, like I, we tweeted at the time that was not a gold send, but we'll yeah. take it right. They, like, we'll they take didn't. It. They didn't. They wanted to make it a makeup, but they. Yeah. I feel like their hand was forced. Right, and then there's a gold send. That's another one that's kind of at the top of the arc at the other end and they call it against us and then Ford loses his mind. and gets called for a T because like now they're, you know, we're going to a media timeout. We're down 19, might as well make it 21 while we're at it. I mean, like, like it was just, it's, it's all of those things that might as well fire me while you're at it. It, it, it felt like uh, Vince Vaughn in old school, uh, you know, getting kicked out of the youth soccer game. Let's make it official. But but those just kind of like some was that up, Jack, old right? school or kicking and screaming? Old no, school. he wasn't in kicking and screaming. That was Will Ferrell. Yeah, it was old yeah. school. So so anyway, like yeah, that that sums it up. And look, look, 
Back to the bigs here. Yeah. This is going to happen a lot against teams with a halfway decent big man. Their starting um, big, uh, Poto, P-O-H-T-O is his last name, 23 mm. and 12 on the game, uh, three assists, you know, like just just a monster against us. Um, they out-rebounded us, Zach, 50 to 31. And some of that had to do with how many shots we missed. Like we gave them a lot of things to rebound, but like, man, oh man, 50 to 31 is just unacceptable. Pete, stop the presses. We shot 29 threes. And <laughs> yeah, but how many of those were like Jimerson shooting out of rhythm, right? Yeah, no, or like, uh, they were a ton of them. Yeah. Yeah. It was it, so, yeah, we attempted a lot of threes, but we were trying to catch up in this yes. one and, and no, the pace yeah. was all wrong. And the, the, yeah, everything was just all wrong in this game it was hard to watch 50 rebounds. Yeah. To 31. 50 rebounds. Not great. They shot. How did they only, uh, how did they only shoot 31% from three? When did they they did not go one of ten in the first half? Wichita State? Yeah. Oh, they did. Holy crap. Yeah, that dude Rogers heated up in the second half. Like like all of those threes that they hit in the second half to extend the lead. Like when SLU got to within set, like there was one time. What was it? We were down six, and I turned to my wife. I was like, okay, we're down six. Let's figure out what can go wrong. <laughs> and we're going to be down 15 in three minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like 19 by the time I turned back to her. And I was yeah. like, because the thing, the, all of those stupid, she was like, was yeah, yeah, I know. And and she had just, she had just, um, you know, turned off the, uh, the Xavier game where they d destroyed St. Mary's just picked apart, dismantled a very good St. Mary or what people thought would be a good St. Mary's team. And she's watching slew and just like, she, it just very much feels like she's looking at me like, I I feel bad for you. I get I get what's going on this season. I get the vibe. Like she saw all those stupid plays. We were both confounded over the reverse goaltending. Like everything that happened, I was like, did that just hit off the ref's leg? It was all of those things, and she was just like, all right, I'm going up. I'm done with this. Don't drag me into your you know nether world of basketball <laughs> fandom here. <laughs> She's like, she, I'm a. I, she emasculated. I. It wasn't that. She's like, I'm a Big East fan. I don't need this trip. Yes. I don't have time for this. Oh and She went. Man, to, she went to bed bastard. with her head held high. Yeah. She's... So it, it it was hard, Zach. And you know, it's 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 hard to to look at this box. Oh, it's hard to talk God. about this game. It's just like, I, I. You just shake your head, right? Like like this after that Wyoming win, and you're kind of like, all right. We're four and zero now. We beat a team that's got some size. We can do this. And then these last two games, I just feel like we're 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 right back in that pit of despair. And and I don't know how we come out of it with sincere Parker on the on the shelf. Um, those little bone injuries in your foot, little bone breaks in your foot, are the kind of thing that like they're not the end of the world. But if you try and rush those back, if you don't get them just right. Uh, they they persist forever. So I I don't know how confident I am about a whatever his timetable is going to be, but this could be a long season. Yeah. <laughs> For those not watching YouTube, Zach's got his head way back right now. I'm sc I'm scrolling through other things. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, I'd like some days, man. I just. I just don't know what to do with this team, man. They're just they're, like, if I saw like the end of that game, truly like the two dunks at the end mm -hmm. for Wichita state, like it feels like that. That's all I need to see from this Billiken team. Yeah. It's yeah. just, I, I just, I, I don't, this team is complete. I, I have no idea what they're trying to do on defense, what they're trying to do on offense. Um, I very rarely do we get easy baskets off action. Um, we got a few tonight, but like the defense, every time we give up a basket, 
it's an open, it seems like it's an open shot or just like we had no chance to stop it. Like nothing, this team is, is the motto of this team right now is no chance because they have no chance of, of, of closing the gap on a, a deficit. They have, they, it feels like every time a player gets into the paint, they have no chance to stop them. Every time the ball goes to a, a three point shooter, there's no chance we close out in time. It just feels like this team, it, it, there's no reason to watch this team right now. It, it's other than some deep seated love for Billiken basketball. Like, uh, they, they just, the, There's the just hard, nothing. The hard part is, like last week, I was talking about. There actually is a decent reason to watch this team, and it's because like I like a lot of these young players, yes. and like I want to see them play, and I'm excited about them, and they clearly play hard. But the problem is now they are caught up in this endless cycle that we're seeing, where we talked about this a lot last year, where we don't have like a style. Like we're we're no. always we're always on our heels, conforming to how the other team is dictating the game, and if they're a team that plays slow, or if they're a team that plays big, or if they're a team that spreads it out, no matter what their style is, we're always on our heels trying to keep up with what they're trying to do, and we watch Vermont pick them apart with good floor spacing and patience and shooting, and then now we watch Wichita State pick them apart with a lot of size inside. And, uh, you know, two guards who were willing to chuck it, you know, like, and one of them who got hot in the second half. And I just, I just don't know what to say, except we're, we're falling right back into the same traps. And, and honestly, that's all I got, you know, like there, there are a lot of other bad teams in the A-10 that we can, we can get to their scores this week now, because like, I'm, I'm exasperated already. We're four and two, but these two have been so so disheartening the last couple of days. Yeah. I just, uh, I don't like, what was the, I, I know there was one last thing I wanted to, uh, bring up about the defense. It, it just feels like, Oh, the stupidity of the like junk defense. And was it, what night was it where, we start out in a zone and then Travis switches to man to man and nobody has a freaking clue what's going on. So there's just a wide open drive to the, to the, right. to the basket. It's just like, <laughs> I know this team stinks, man. This program yeah. stinks. It's, it's, <sighs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what what is what is the goal here? Like, I I don't know how uh, the athletic director, the well, I know how the president can watch this because he has no idea about anything basketball. But how does the athletic director how how do you go into work on Monday and thank people like Kevin Kalish and? Katie Shields and you know the people that have made an NCAA tournament since 2019 um, how do you go into work and look those people in the eye when the one program that's supposed to carry this this athletic department financially is is losing to teams that that have a fraction of the budget that you do when your women's soccer team went and hung two goals on Georgetown hung two goals on Indiana, put four goals in against Penn state beat two big 10 teams this season, took a big 10 team to the wire in the sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament. You fired Lisa stone. Because she could not get over the hump. She could not provide. She, You fired her for mediocrity straight up. 
what's the there's a how how do you watch this basketball team and you think all right this is fine yeah we are uh we're we're stuck in this situation right i mean like like that's that that's what it is um the thing is zach like these thanksgiving tournaments these these mtes you know, in, in november are an opportunity to kind of make a statement on a national level, you know, like you play a few games in a few days, they're always televised. These, these games were on ESPN too, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's an opportunity to make a little noise, to get a little bit of national attention. And then when you come home and play a few more buy games, the rest of November and December, you're going to have some more people in the seats because they're kind of like, all right, something's happening here. This could be a pretty good team. And I think with the exception of Cancun, as West Pine Bills pointed out on Twitter, we have stunk in these November tournaments. Yep. All of them. Mm -hmm. so, basically since those those good uh, Majerus and the the first couple cruise teams a decade ago. We we have been terrible in these in these events. And it just it, it it's an early season statement that hey there's nothing to see here right like that that's what it feels like to me when when you lose to teams that are not headliners and you lose like this there's just not a lot of incentive for people in the St. Louis area to you know truck their family down in the dead of winter park in the Olive Compton garage and and pay good money for tickets to this I, that that's that's what I struggle with. It's like I don't know what the way out is uh, uh, right now. Um, people are jumping into uh, Doc Chaffetz's mentions on Twitter. It's uh, it's all going downhill, man. Yeah. Well, why don't we go around the A10? We're we're not the only ones in a in in a miserable state right now. Here's the here's the thing. We just lost to Wichita State by nineteen. Uh, do you know what Dayton did today, Pete? Do you know where the Dayton Flyers are today? I, I do. I I do know where they are and what they did. Yes. Yeah, they they lost by fourteen to the number seven team in the nation. Yeah. Yeah, Houston. Yeah, weird, weird. How that works? Well, why, why they had we... roster turnover. They lost their point guard to a season-ending injury. I mean, losing by fourteen is still not something that I'm like as trying to aspire to. But they no, did but at least before. they're competitive on a national level. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, Monday the thirteenth, UMass one hundred two, Quinnipiac eighty one. That's a hell of a score for a hockey game. Uh, <laughs> Duquesne eighty five, Stony Brook sixty three. Pete Tuesday. UIC beat Loyola 72 Ooh. 67. Loyola stinks again. I don't understand why they were picked in the top four of the conference, but whatever. St. Joe's 100, Stonehill 56. Uh, wow. Uh, George Washington 71, Hofstra 60, Rhode Island 69, Wagner nice. 53, LaSalle 69, nice. Bucknell 57. Uh, Zach, why don't you give us Wednesday here? Uh, Boston College 68, Richmond 61. VCU 73, uh, Radford, shout out Jack Ravoin, 50, uh, Princeton 70, Duquesne 67, Ouch. George Mason 90, uh, Andy Bernard 83. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, Thursday the 16th, Dayton beat LSU. Not bad, 70 to 67. And then St. Bonaventure 66, Oklahoma State 64. Got a couple wins over lower half power conference teams. Uh, Friday the 17th, uh, Fordham 77, North Falcon Way State 64, Dayton 88, St. John's 81, Harvard 78, UMass 75, and OT. Uh, how about them apples? Uh, ETSU 70, Davidson 68, Duquesne 77, Ryder 58, Auburn 77, St. Bonaventure 60, and Texas AM Commerce 57, 
St. Joe's 54 at home. And if you thought, Zach, that Friday is where the wheels started to come off, uh, Saturday and Sunday is when all four of them blew out. No, that's when the doors, that's when the, the doors, doors and the, uh, the, the, uh, the hood, the trunk, both side mirrors just plopped over. This is when the A-10 uh, burst into flames. Jo- <laughs> uh, Spontaneous combustion. So if yeah. you were wondering if spontaneous combustion is real, I present yeah. to you Exhibit A. Yeah, sun- Saturday was a mixed bag, and Sunday, woof. George Washington, 79, New Hampshire, 67. LaSalle beat Southern Indiana by one, 79-78. VCU beat Seattle by four, Jesus. 60 to 56. Northwestern, 72. Rhode Island, 61. And then Loyola needed some last minute heroics to beat yes. new orleans by three so mostly wins that day not very convincing run us down sunday though zach we were not the only ones to lose yeah i guys i just fashion. want I, I, i'm gonna need everybody to sit down for for these results abilene christian 59 fordham 45 fordham is fraudum this year pete that that result is unbelievable to me. Abilene Christian is in the Southland in Texas, and that conference has been picked apart by the WAC and by a couple other conferences. It sucks. It's the it's one of the absolute worst conferences. Uh, to lose to those teams, we've now lost twice to team with that McNeese win over VCU. That's two to that conference this season. It's not good. And by fourteen, oh my god. That gym, by the way, they played in down at the Virgin Island. Isn't that the Virgin Islands tournament? Is that what they're in? That is the tackiest ass, like, just set up. Just the big mural on the end. Like, it's just yeah. awful. Uh, Charlotte, 54. George Mason, 49. I I love to see that. I just, my, my the schadenfreude meter is off the charts today. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Including yeah. the Jackson State game. Uh Washington State 78, Rhode Island 57, Houston 69, nice Dayton 55. Yeah, that so the Houston Dayton one, Houston actually, there were times where it looked like they were really gonna run away with it. Um, I thought that would be a bigger score in the end than they wound up with. Um, but yeah, not still not great for um for Dayton. Pete, um, let's uh, let's preview Dartmouth as if it matters. I'll go through this quickly, Zach. I took I took copious notes here, and then uh, yeah, I'm revisiting them, and it's probably Please too hurry. much. But <laughs> th- they're one and two. Their only win is over a D three school called Westfield State. They've got losses at Duke, which is fine, and then at home against UMass Lowell, which is not fine. Both of them were blowouts. SLU gets six days off before this game, but Dartmouth will have had ten days off before it. Um, the Ivy League coaches picked Dartmouth to finish seventh out of eight teams this season, and last year's leading scorer transferred to Loyola, so we will actually see him later this season. They actually start a lot of size um, using a forward-heavy lineup. Dusan Neskovic is a 6'8", 205-pound senior from Bosnia, averages about 14-3 and three a game. Brandon Mitchell Day, you might know that name. He's a 6'8", 205-pound sophomore from forward from st louis he went to micds of course he is yeah and then he averages 11 and 3.3 rebounds jackson monroe 6 8 sophomore forward Jaden williams 6 6 sophomore wing ryan corner 6 4 junior guard handles the ball these three don't really put up big numbers at all jaron johnson is probably their best player off the bench a 6 6 wing um he was their only double digit score against lowell he averages about seven and seven. And then they've got a 6'10, 225 junior from Serbia who comes off the bench and adds about 6.7 points a game and 4.7 rebounds a game. Nikola Dmitrievich. Um, so those two. Please don't say this next line. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm don't just say it. what I'm highlighting right now. I don't here. care if I'm jinxing it, Zach. Because don't if we, do if we it. lose to them. Uh, this is not a good team. Dartmouth is not a good team. They don't shoot well from anywhere. They're one of the worst three point shooting teams. No, in don't say heading it. in today. They were number three sixty one of three sixty three in three point percentage, which is hard to do. They get out rebounded despite having all that size that we just described. 
They don't force turnovers. They don't block many shots. They don't move the ball well. They play slow. They play ugly. They're not good. They might be skewed a little bit because they played Duke in the first game, but they actually put up worse numbers against UMass Lowell on, on, on almost every metric. That's because they're the ar- flagship. Arguably, yes, they are. Arguably inflated those numbers against a lower division team. So there's nothing here at all that scares me except maybe their size. Uh, one of those bigs, maybe Neskovich, maybe Dmitrievich, maybe Mitchell Day with a homecoming. One of those guys is probably going to have a big day, but I just don't think they have enough um, at all. I, I really wish we had Parker. Um, the, you know, he could probably score 30 on these guys, but nonetheless, I, I think this is going to be a, I don't know if you can call it a bounce back game, but we, we, we just, if we lose to this team, just shut it down. I'll put it that way. You know what? While while Billiken fans are worried about the state of Billiken basketball, you know what you never have to worry about? What you're going to get when you order two men and a garden salsa, Pete. Yeah, and Zach, I've got my latest shipment in. It's It's been fantastic so far. I was working today on two different products, both the pickles and the chips and salsa. Had a little hodgepodge lunch, decided to throw in some chips and salsa. And uh, the pickles... I got to say, because everything is so small batch, handmade, you know, like this is not a giant factory, uh, you know, craft or one of the other like big pickle producers. Each batch is a little bit different, right? Like every jar you open might be a little different. It's still there. It's still going to be their flavor profile, their house cut, the size, everything, all that stuff is, is the same. But this jar I opened today, Zach, is like, I think it's the best one I've ever had from them. And I know there's something to be said about, you know, every jar of pickles you open being identical or, or, or whatever. But like, I like the fact that this stuff has, you know, they sell at farmer's markets and it kind of has that vibe a little bit like, Hey, this is a really good batch. They're always good, but like some of them just have that extra oomph. And, and this one absolutely had that today. Um, I'm already daydreaming about going back to those tomorrow at lunch. Uh, I know I'm going to be do that, doing that. I'm working from home and I can't wait. So go get some for yourself. Tumaninagarden.com. Whatever they're doing to their pickles right now is fantastic. Classic deal, by the way, is what I'm working on and can't recommend them enough. Tumaninagarden.com. Oh, boy. Um, by the way, we're going to get into women's basketball, but as I'm scrolling through Twitter during the ad read, uh, SLU Women's Basketball is hosting a free clinic. Uh, now let me rephrase that. They're holding it re- They're uh, holding a free basketball clinic, not just a free clinic. Um, <laughs> uh, it is November twenty fifth, twenty twenty three, from twelve to one. It's for children from kindergarten to fifth grade, and you can sign up at slewgirlsbasketballcamps.com. Not a great uh, URL there, but uh, a really great opportunity to, uh, you know, if you're if your kid's uh, kindergarten to fifth grade or if you're listening to us and you're a kindergarten to fifth grade, you should go uh, sign up for this, but get your parents' permission to, to log on, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, let's talk women's basketball, Pete, because I, I don't know if like Rebecca Rebecca Tillett is either a uh, uh, the greatest women's basketball college basketball coach of all time, or she is the like this like female empowerment motivational wizard. Um, maybe because, she's both. Uh, she, she might be, be both. I dude, it's like she called her shot, dude. She did. She did. I mean, she's, she's delivered. I, uh, you know, like we, we talked about her post game presser after that first game against Drake and they've been pretty great since then. Like they've kind of figured things out defensively and they beat the other team from Missouri on their schedule in, in sequence 79 67 win over Missouri state on Wednesday, the 15th. And, you know, I think a lot of local fans think of Missouri State as being kind of a women's basketball powerhouse, right? Like everybody thinks of those Jackie Styles oh, days. Yeah. And I know she was special. I know she was different. 
and that team was as good as they ever were at the time, but there's always going to be that perception. So, um, yes. anyway, they're, they're, they're a good team, you know, like they slew was down 20 to uh, 20 to 11 at the end of the first quarter, chipped away in the second and then led, um, 28 to 27. And so of course, Missouri state hit three at the buzzer to go up by two at halftime. And you kind of realize like, okay, they're, they're playing some pretty good teams here. You know, Zach, like nothing, nothing is a given, but this team just finds a way. Yeah. I just, they are just, they are so real. They are relentless, man. And they, mm-hmm. they make shots. I really am, am upset at how little I've been able to catch of their games, but uh, that Mizzou game was so much fun to watch. I, I missed, I don't, where was I for this game? Wednesday the fifteenth. I watched this one. Um, oh man, I am spacing on it, but it was like <laughs> I don't know. I watched this one too. It was uh, this team is just like they're so resilient. Like you think, like you've had, you have so much of this this history of men's and women's basketball just not doing the damn thing, and women's basketball is just out here doing the damn thing night in and night out yeah it was a sloppy third quarter slew got too loose with the ball the refs let a ton of contact go i could tell by my notes here i was taking them in the moment uh but they did just enough to hang around and then missouri state goes really cold in the fourth quarter um including from the free throw line slew's pressure really got to them too and slew executed on the offensive end hit their free throws outscored missouri state 33 to 16 in the final frame um, by the way, getting to the line, excellent strategy for this team. They shoot really well uh, from the line in every game. 78% in this game. They were 83 in the, 83% in the second half and 91% in the fourth quarter. So they just kept getting better from the free throw line over the course of the game, daring them uh, to, to put them on the line. Uh, Peyton Kennedy, huge game. 24 points, 8 of 12 from the field, 2 of 3 from 3. Six of six, perfect from the free throw line. And then she had five steals. She was plus 27 in this game, which is pretty incredible given that Slew was down for a decent amount of the game and won by 12. Uh, just, just you know, great performance from her. She's been awesome this year, Zach. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. Julia Martinez, another one who's been fantastic. Career high, 21 points, four of nine, one of two, 12 of 16. Uh she just gets to the line and and she's just a steady steady plus 17 in this one she's gotten way better from the free throw line i remember that earlier in her career being kind of a liability um she's never been the most efficient shooter but like she's really improved her game in that sense she added seven rebounds six assists uh markavia shaver has led them with 10 rebounds not a lot of other stat sheets stands out in this game Really just a great team effort on Slew's part. Um, and most players on this team really unselfish and seem willing to play a role uh, whenever it makes sense, Zach, to get a win. I was just thinking back to the the Gray Seasons documentary. Man, I wish we would have had a, a crew following this team last year. Yeah. And this that year for that matter. <laughs> that would have been fun. Yeah. Uh, Shavers had 10 rebounds. Not a lot. Other uh, stat sheet standouts in this game. Uh, it, it was just a, a, a cohesive team effort. Um, everybody's playing their role. It just feels like this team just, they're so unselfish. But, like, not in that, like, you, you talk about being unselfish and it's always, like, pass first. This team's unselfish in that they, you know, they play their role and they play it right. And they play it to to the point. Um, it's not so much just a uh, you know everybody shares the ball. It's it's just that everybody knows their role and shuts their mouth. No, uh, they know their role and they you know they they stick to that role. And you know when it's their time to shine, that they they will step up. But uh, only if the game's asking for it. So I think that's an important point here because that the 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 lineup they had against Mizzou at the end was not their starting lineup. We we made that note after that game, but it was a different lineup down the stretch in the fourth quarter in this one that helped close them out. So I think the thing, like it's showing that Tillett adjusts to the game, adjusts to the opponent 
and adjust to what she's getting out of her team at that time. Right. And like Julia Martinez was on the bench for that. Most of that fourth quarter against Lou here, she is in this one instrumental down the line in the fourth quarter, hitting her free throws, just doing everything in crunch time, forcing turnovers in the third quarter. Um, she was, she was great here to close it out. And, and I, I just think that's, uh, that's just such an impressive quality for them to be able to make those adjustments based on that unselfishness, willingness for, for them all to play roles. And then, you know, till it's seeing what's going on with her team and just making those adjustments in the moment. Um, it, I would it, say, well, go I was going to say it's a stark contrast between the women and the men, because you see the women, you know, the they're making adjustments as it pertains to their opponent, but they're not bending to the will of the opponent. That's they're right. still doing what they want to do. Yeah. It's just in a different way and with a different player or a different lineup. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They're, they're not letting them, them dictate anything. It's just kind of like, like kind of looking across the court and saying like, okay, who's gonna, who's gonna make the plays here. Who's the, who's the right matchup. Missouri State's size was a bit of an issue for a slew at times. Uh, Masagayo and Taylor, really nice uh, forwards. Uh, Paige Rocca is a really good player, too. Martinez knew Rocca had four fouls, by the way, and took the ball right at, the, at her with a minute to go and and fouled her out. She's She was their leading scorer at the time and also their biggest threat at the free throw line. So that was a heads-up play. That's in, how you play in, lawyer in ball time. and win. It, it really is. I mean, she just she recognized that and and – it right at her um but yeah zach bottom line is they're just never out of a game every time you Again, look at the margin stark contrast it, it, it's true because like you look at the mar- margin uh and 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 you think the game's getting out of hand the wrong way and, and for them it's been early in the game right like they've they've gotten in the hole in the first quarter against mizzou against missouri state and they either go on a big run or they just kind of chip away at it but never do they get discouraged never do they stop fighting um, and, and, and one other th- note I have at the end of this one, there was a very realistic chance that they could start the season zero and three, and it wouldn't necessarily have been a statement that like they suck or the season's lost or right. anything like that. Like these were three good teams and they came out of that two and one Drake, Mizzou, Missouri state. That's quality opponents to start the year, learn what kind of team you are. You know, they would love to have that Drake game back, but like. The, the bottom line is that was that was a tough stretch and and they're they came out of it pretty well yeah I, I mean I texted you the other day I said and I I incorrectly noted that they could you know finish non-conference undefeated realistically at this point and uh that's incorrect yeah uh, forgot about that first one right uh BYU will probably be uh is going to be a tough test. I believe Ball State's gen generally good. Um, Wichita State, I think, gave us some problems last year. But, like, I mean, I don't see any reason why we can't go into that. You know, I think Illinois State might be good. Um, but they, I don't. They, s- I mean, they also have the mentality of a team that can beat anybody. Yes. Like, they, they, they never look afraid. They never look like they feel like they're not going to be able to compete um so i think that's a big part of it too oh fun fact when you click byu uh at the slew website it takes you to a uh a a 404 (laughs) oh (laughs) oh well anyway go on sorry yeah but anyway yeah so so they they go out to hawaii zach they're in the north shore showcase in oahu um on saturday the 18th they put up a program record 109 over a, uh, a 63 from Chaminade, which is a Division II team. Um, the previous record, 106, was scored against Davidson in 2016. I would not have gotten that trivia question right, by the way. Uh, oh, that's okay. very surprising to me, especially based on what happened in the, uh, uh, you know, has happened against Davidson in the men's side. Um, SLU only scored 48 in the first half, if you could say only, and then they scored 61 in the second half. Zach, 12 different Billikens checked into the game, 11 scored, and five were in double digits. Uh, just a pretty commanding win up and down against the lower division. Silver Swords of Chaminade. Yeah, uh, not much to say here. Uh, McMakin led with 19 points, five rebounds. Kennedy had 16 on six of 11, four or six from three. Martinez, six, eight, seven, four. 
Calhoun had six points and seven assists. Only one turnover for Calhoun. Uh, Brooklyn Gray had 12 and six off the bench, quickly becoming one of my favorite players on this yeah, team cool. is Brooklyn Gray. Um, Ashley Connor had 11 points in her first, uh, her first in a slew uniform after red shirting last season. Mia and Castro had 10 and five tier assignment at seven, 10 and four blocks. That's nice to see. Bree Johns went eight, had eight and eight. Sue out rebounded them 66 to 21, which is ridiculous. I, I just, you'd never see that. <laughs> uh, Force nine turnovers only 54, 40 and 92 slash line efficient from the field. It's not a surprise against a lower division team, but it's also a reminder of how vital it is for this team to get to the free throw line. I mean, I talked about it a little bit with, with Martinez, um, yeah. But yeah, next up is uh Wake Forest and BYU at the North North Shore Showcase. Uh w- BYU will be on ESPN Plus. Yeah. I don't believe the Wake Forest game will be streamed anywhere other than that Flow Sports adjacent um whatever. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh yeah. Go on, sorry. Yeah, then they host UIC on Sunday the 26th once they're back in St. Louis. Uh, volleyball, all conference honors. We're just going to run through this as, as quickly as possible with, with given uh, proper due. All conference honors, second team, Delaney Rice, rookie team, Trinity Luckett, academic, Hankin, Lyon, Opperly. Uh, Billikens come through with a 3-1 win at Davidson in the A-10 tournament. They beat the host. Friday, November 17, 25, 18, 23, 25, 25, 23, and 27, 25. Kayla Richardson had 20 kills. She was great all day. Lion had 31 assists. Rogers, season high, 32 digs. Slu was just poised all day in this one, Pete. Just solid as a rock. Didn't get too high, didn't get too low. Davidson had some runs in the third and fourth sets, but uh, Slu kept it manageable despite, you know, being in Davidson's gym. Yeah, they never got rattled. Um, there were a lot of times where I kind of felt like the match was turning and they never let it happen, right? Like any time Davidson went up or got close, they always had an answer. Uh, just a really impressive when they got it out there. Run us down the Dayton score because this was, man, I really thought the Billikens were going to make this a five-setter. I, I thought so too. Um, it was a 3-1 loss against Dayton ultimately on Saturday the 18th in the semifinals of the A-10 tournament. They won the first one, 25-23. The second one, they dropped pretty quickly, 13-25, then 15-25. But then, Zach, in the fourth, Slu was up late. Uh, I don't know if it was 21 or 22 where they still had a lead. They wound up losing 25-27, but, man, what an effort. Yeah. Um, they, they actually took two of the four sets that Dayton gave up all year against A-10 opponents. Loyola got the other two, including one in the A-10 tournament final uh, as we pod today, three to one. Um, but Dayton entered this game 29 and two. They hadn't, they still haven't lost since September 6th, right in the beginning of the season. Um, Richardson had 16 kills. Hankin had 15. Lyon had 23 assists. Rogers, 23 digs. Slew finished the six, season 500, 16 and 16 overall, 8 and 10 and A-10 play. But Zach, I mean, new coach, new direction. They're going to turn over a lot this year. I think seven yeah. seniors are on the way out. Um, we're going to see a hell of yeah. a hell of a job for her to do. It's going to be a lot. You know, it's next year is going to be tough, too. But yeah. um, we like, obviously, the direction they're going. See if you can't get any of the uh, the kids to come home that went away. The, the Katie Shields yeah. method. Yeah. Um, Pete, I'm going to run us down men's soccer real quick, and then I'll let you do the baseball signings. Men's soccer, uh, NCAA selection show was Monday the 13th at noon. St. Louis time, the Billikens did not hear their name called. If it would have been a 64 team field, they probably would have been in, but it's not. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Right. right. Uh, finished the season with an RPI of 39 and an overall record of eight, four, and five. All conference honors. Defensive player of the year, Diego Konings. First team, Konings and Christian Buendia. Second team, Jeremy Abinell. Leatherman and Anderson made the rookie team, and the academic team went to Konings and Buendia. Pete, give us the baseball signings, and then let's get the hell out of here. 
They signed four in the high school class. Uh, Lucas Red, a pitcher from Rockford. That's a great Kansas name, by City. the way. Red Lucas is always Red. a Red. Red is always awesome. Like it's I don't know days. why. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like Michael Red. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Hank Comrich, a uh, first baseman slash outfielder from Altoff Catholic over in Belleville, Illinois. Uh, Adam Shipley's a pitcher from Francis Howell High School in St. Charles. Uh, and Tyler Holman is a pitcher from Lake St. Louis. He goes to Liberty High School. So these four join a class that includes six transfers that we introduced back in August. I, I've run on that Liberty High School track before. Um, Hank Gomrick sounds like a, a player from like the 70s. He does. Yeah, yeah. he just needs like a mustache. And yes, uh, curly you know, player, players in that era looked a good uh, 10 to 25 years older than they actually were. And I really I love those old baseball cards. Yeah. Oh, yeah um well that'll do it for us um yeah thanks for listening and i i apologize if this shows up like closer to noon than eight or nine but uh i'm going to bed they kept go us bills. up late go bills go bills go bills, go bills.